on. All right, let's try it. I'm trying to turn this shit off, and I get... There it is. <laughs> there you Bam. go. Bam. All right, so... Yes, man. <laughs> season 2, episode 12. Um, Good episode number. Yeah, yeah, episode yeah. 12. Uh, I do 20 uh, a season. This is season 2, so... Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, we're... Uh, Biteworthy is a, 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 a term that I'm trying to use. Nobody's used it, but it's where biting material is like... It started in... Like rap culture, where yeah, you, like, you bite, you bite someone, you style. bite someone's style, their bars yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, comedy is the same way. I've seen people steal jokes, um, but someone I think who is like bite worthy is worthy enough to want ah. to steal from. Plus, it's a show about food. I'm like, oh, okay, that's a clever. So, I think it's a. I think you've achieved pundum. <laughs> pundum is what I'm looking for. Yeah, I man. think you've achieved like you did it. You know. It took me a week. I was like, "Wow, I gotta name this ice cream." <laughs> As I asking people, "What is it funny?" So today, I have I have a good one today. I have I have a good one all the time, but this is a better one yeah. than most. Yeah. Because I have someone who you've uh, seen him on Comedy Central. Um, your Showtime has come out. It's coming out. I was I was, I was on Showtime. Uh, well, how many ago? A while ago. Yeah. But I, I said I told the host last night to say Showtime. Because for some reason, good credit. Everybody wants to say the same things. Like everybody always wants to go so Conan. Everybody wants to lean into Conan. Yeah. Or you know Fallon or whatever. And it's like you know who cares. I also credits are like I made that joke. Uh, well, I, I, it's funny how much we as Americans care about credits because in yeah. like other countries when they do comedy they don't do credits. It's like here's Fahim. There you go. Yeah, it's like the, the host have gives like it. a. This next bloke, really funny. <laughs> this next comedian, one of my faves, whatever. This next comedian, piece of fucking shit. <laughs> but they just sort of give you like a personal, like personal accolades. Aaron Weber liked the. He's like, can I use ESPN? Because he was on there for a second during commercial. Yeah. That's funny. But you've seen him on a whole bunch. He's got comedy albums, uh, Scuttlebutt, and then latest one, King Scorpio. King Scorpio. Uh, you can get him and find out his tour. He's been touring comedian for a long time. Sean Patton. Thank you. Yes. Also, Peacock special, December 2nd. December 2nd? Yeah. God. On the Peacock. Um, you, you, you sold a subscription because of that. There it is. There you go. NBC. Pay attention. <laughs> Yeah. Watch those Universal. numbers. Yeah. Watch those numbers. So I'm going to get right into it, man. Right. You are a Louisiana boy. I man, am. man now. Uh, if God in his divine will, if there is one up there, decided to take one of these two away, which one would you hope he picked? Gumbo or the muffaletta? Muffaletta. Take it away? <laughs> yeah. Muffaletta. I, could, I, I, could, I, I could. figured that's that's a pretty... That's, yeah. This is a 10-point favorite, I yeah. figured. 20 point favorite. I do, look, I, I love a good muffalata, not gonna lie, but I also have never in my life finished a muffalata. It's a big sandwich. It's a big carby sandwich. Huge. Fucking carby. Um, I, the mini muffaladas, I've finished a few of those. Love them. You get a half, split it with a buddy. You get a half, split it with a buddy. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it's a delicious sandwich, but uh, I, 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 like, I love gumbo. Gumbo's good. I like, you know, it's like, I like. I like baseball, but I love basketball. I, I, you know, understood. I, 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 I like uh, a lot of. Well, I mean, I, it's such a great analogy in its own way. It's like, are you going to be muffalata or are you going to be gumbo? <laughs> you, you want to be gumbo. You know, you want to be gumbo is versatile. I think the most yeah. mediocre gumbo is probably better than the best muffalata. A muff, like a muffalata is great. If you are, if if I had to only eat every meal while jogging for the rest of my life, <laughs> I would yeah. unfortunately probably be encouraged to eat muffaladas, but I'd still try and do a gumbo. That's just called the coon ass carb low diet. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. I'd somehow figure it out. That's I'd deep fry a bowl of gumbo and <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm gonna go with gumbo every time. I like that. That's a good yeah. one. I I'm a fan. I had etouffee for the first time. Shit etouffee, was crazy good. Very close. Uh, very close relative to gumbo. Yeah. Made almost similarly. Uh, not as popular for some reason, I think, because uh, just the name. Yeah, etouffee. 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 People etouffee. get a little... People... There's a, there's something about certain people in America who look at something, probably understand how to pronounce it, <laughs> but can't allow themselves 
to pronounce it properly because they think that makes them a dweeb or something <laughs> or gay. That's why I heard Evian sales are going yeah. down. <laughs> they don't know how to say Evian, exactly. <laughs> Uh, people are like et too fay. Et what is that? But gumbo? Oh, it's it's crab dick. You, it's yeah. crab dip. You hit not crab dick. It's crab dip. You hit crab right? dip. <laughs> you have an album called Scuttlebutt. I man. do. Uh, very funny name. It's a. It's, it's if you don't know Scuttlebutt, he'll explain it in the the album. But Scuttlebutt is basically like a rumor. Yes. It's like it's like a gossip or like a, a tale that is you know usually like a small town setting. Typically, kind of yeah. is what you see. What's like? What are the best places to get the latest scuttlebutts? The best. I mean, you, any small like when you. I find there's a lot of scuttlebutt around North Carolina. A lot of scuttlebutting in North Carolina because there's a lot of smaller. <clears throat> you know, Charlotte. <clears throat> excuse me. Is the largest city in North Carolina? Yeah, but. There's still, you know, it's not that large of a city. Right. And, it's like Knoxville. Yeah. And there's all, you know, I like North Carolina because there's a spread of uh, medium-sized cities. And they're always talking about one another. <laughs> they're always just yapping. They're always talking at Oh, he's trash. from Hillsborough? Oh, oh damn, well, he must not know how to screw in a lot. Let me <laughs> guess. You order a drink like that, you must do your drinking in a rally. <laughs> rally? Because you know, you know how we drink out here in Asheville. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, yo, you're going to cook a pig that way? I mean, guess. You grew up in Wilmington. Oh, you might as well be from Tennessee. Yeah, you might yeah, as well yeah. be from South Carolina. <laughs> yeah, I, I get that. I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you there's three places that come to my mind for the latest scuttlebutt. For scuttlebutt, yeah. Is, uh, have you ever been to black churches? Oh, yeah, sure. Dude, the best. Like they, yeah. They'd be like Sister Bernadette sleeping with the deacon or whatever it is. Sleeping with the deacon. Almost <laughs> rhymes. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that there's that's one. Um, green rooms. Oh yeah, sure. Green rooms are they, they talk some shit, and that's always I mean, that's always fun. And then the, the the person that they're talking shit about will comment, "Hey, good set." I mean, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> shit, go deeper with that. Even just comedy scenes. Yeah, it's like a bunch of just like get around, sit around, gossip. It can it can be very high school from time to time. Agreed, agreed. <clears throat> and those are the times I just walk away from it. Yeah, like yeah. I walked away from high school. <laughs> no. Peace. Peace. Yeah, Chuck it's up. like, yeah, there's a lot of guys. Chuck up the on. deuces, as the kids say. But also, used to say. here's some scuttlebutt for you. The album is actually named, and it's a bit I do on the album, but it's named after an actual strip club in Slidell, Louisiana. That R.I.P. was called Scuttlebutt. No, it's no longer open. Yeah, it I saw not, you went there. I saw I yeah, saw that post. That was crazy. Did not survive the pandemic. Oh, but, that's rough. Which is weird that of all the viruses to take down that place. <laughs> There was COVID. Well, I, yeah. not her, not herpes, there's, not HPV. There's just. some prime ones before that, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, but I <clears> believe <throat> it. You know, the th- the third one here is um is actually this show is when I have a comic on. Yeah. They'll automatically tell me, "Oh, that guy's hack. Oh, this this comic is fucking this comic." And you know, I'm, oh. I I so, I met this guy in I met him at a Philly show and he does this. I'm like, "Wow." But I'm like a vault of you know this, but I keep it in here because. Oh you know, yeah, you got to. I mean, it's you have to. It's just, I mean, can't unleash that. I also stopped paying attention to that shit so <laughs> long ago because you're just like, comedy's already hard enough. It and is hard. It is a. It is very easy to get wrapped up in uh, non-important bullshit, like gossip, like who's fucking who, like yeah. who's writing a script with who and. Can you believe? Can you believe Johan Murphy <laughs> and uh, Salvin Jean Philippe uh, started a sketch group oh, with yeah, Clint? That... <laughs> Clint Jeff Jeffries. Clint that, Jeffries are, of all the people. If any of these are actual comedy names, forgive this us. This was that. This was random, <laughs> and I just created you, and I am the Lord God. But, um, but yeah, like you get wrapped up in that. I mean, that even happens like the highest of the highest at the altar, you know, at the comedy cellar table. You'll, I, sit, you'll, I you'll sit there sometimes. You're like, wait a second. Are we just yapping like fucking just, high school kids? <laughs> Who gives a shit? Let's talk about everything else. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I would agree. I would agree with that. It's definitely not. Yeah. It doesn't behoove anybody. No. Um, so we all know the Cuban story. Or if you don't, you, you damn sure should. The Cuban story, Cuban. let me tell you, is... 
and in my opinion, the funniest story that has ever been told. Ooh. I'm not gonna lie. I don't mean to okay. hype it up, but I, I measured it up against, it goes, the Cuban story, there's a large space, Salt and Pepper Diner by John Mulaney. Oh, come on. And then, and then anybody that yeah. Joey Diaz has ever talked about. Any story. I mean, that's flattering, but I, I think you're a crazy person. <laughs> well, that's that's fine. I think I I'm think, crazy. I think I might try to have to find a way out of here because I'm <laughs> being interviewed by a pure lunatic. I don't even know if this thing's on anymore. No, it really is. Salt, I love how it's like cumin and then salt and pepper diner. It's like, so it has to be a seasoning. Oh, hey, you're a seasoned yeah. comic. It makes sense. Boom. Oh, man, look at that. Boom. Right, writes itself. <laughs> Jesus. And, and in the honor of, I uh, have a gift for you. Oh, some Tony Shatteries? I have some Tony Shatteries. Yeah, That's buddy. for you, unopened jar. Because yeah. it, it starts off not about cumin, ironically. You know, it, no. it, it starts off about this bad boy. starts right? off you describing how you don't sound like a, a dumb Cajun, and people I expect don't. that. But yeah. But let me tell you, it was an, some, it's probably the the, be, yeah. the best ad, not a sponsor, yeah. Yeah, the best ad for Tony Shasheries that could ever be done. You know what, Joyce? You know what Ellie Sox says? So someone, a fan of that bit, took this, the Tony Shasheries logo, and superimposed, oh, this one, I'm sorry, they took this one, <laughs> this one here. Tony this himself. is the old school, and this is like the original, Yeah. and this is the new wave one. They took that one and just kind of like, Superimpose my face. Oh. And uh, I reposted it on Instagram. And then Tony's, their their Instagram account, contacted me and were like, hey, you have to take that down. No. Sorry. It's copyright infringement. You have to take that down or we have to advise our legal department. I was like, okay. And then I messaged them a very like, totally understand, took it down. Listen though, just in case you don't know, because I didn't want them going after the fan. Understood. I was like, here's why. I sent I put a clip to the video. I'm like, as you can see, it's got I think at the time it had like, you know, four million, three and a half, four million views. It was yeah. like it's got a lot of views, a lot of positive response from of this. Of course. And I have had honestly, and this was a few years ago, but at that point I'd probably had at least a couple dozen people tell me that they bought Tony Satries because of that. You're bit. making sales, man. You mean, so I was like, this is just so you know, this isn't just some <laughs> schmuck stealing your shit. And in fact, uh, maybe you know, I, I I pitched them the idea of like, maybe we could do some sort of sponsorship thing. You should, and they, if and they we, were smart. Well, they fired back and were like, absolutely not. <laughs> Please. But, like, I, but, I get your it, but I get it that it was probably dealing with like a lawyer or someone just like. Sure. Apparently, um, yeah, some yeah. paralegal. So I was like, all right, whatever. I don't, I don't hold it against that. you because. <laughs> like I've made, I've fucking made you fucks money, okay? Other just say I made you, <laughs> I made you, Tony. I mean, some people. There's, I guarantee, there's a chef in a food truck who never gave a shit <laughs> about you before, who listens to a lot of goddamn comedy and heard this bit, and now probably uses you in his fucking. Uh, I don't even know what sweet and savory beignets or some or, shit, or it, is, or it is like gazpacho, <laughs> or it, or there it could be a woman or a non-binary person. The, they in, them in in they theirs fucking soup <laughs> of the day. If it's a soup truck, maybe it's an etouffee van. Yeah, etouffee van traveling around this country, enlightening people's taste buds through Tony Satries. <laughs> You're welcome. And their vocabulary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, exactly. I, well, that's for you and to enjoy. I can't believe they didn't. I would hop on that in a, in a heartbeat if I was oh, a CEO. That's but some other. That's why you're not a CEO because you're a human being. <laughs> yeah, Damn, yeah. Damn. We take down the shots, fucking shots one percent. Shots fired. Yeah. Occupy a barbecue place. All right. Uh, I Sh occupy. <laughs> occupy. Because we're taking down the one percent. Man, this know. guy coming in hot with 11, <laughs> 11 year old reference. I like it. I don't know. I'm still doing the ice bucket challenge. I'm behind the times. We, so some other slogans I actually because you you said you put it on a rubber band sandwich, you make it taste like a like a po boy or Probably something. Probably something like that. Yeah. yeah. I said uh, so. Put it on cat meat. It takes the e l out of feline. Turns out just fine. Just fine. That's pretty good. Yeah. And then Ain't put bad. it put in a put a dash on a po boy it becomes a rich man sandwich. Po I mean, depending on where you're getting your po boys, they're <laughs> right. not cheap. Yeah, like 16 bucks now at certain oh, places. I still fucking eat that. Turn, yeah, turns a day old bowl of oatmeal to a fresh bowl of jambalaya. Yeah. All right. That's pretty good. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. Steel cut oatmeal? You got to go steel cut. Steel cut oatmeal, steel cut grits, any kind of... Would any, it be a seafood jambalaya or more like a andouille 
chicken on Dewey on jambalaya? I'd say... You gotta get the specifics. I go shrimp because shrimp goes well with oats and grits All sometimes. Right. So. Fair enough. Yeah. So, oh, I, I see the connection. All right. I'm with you. That's why it's season two, man. I respect it. <laughs> comedy, <laughs> comedy is... It's not, it doesn't seem hard. You make it seem easy, but being a stand-up is is hard. It's very difficult. Yeah. Uh, I've it, it's I have pages and pages of stuff that I've worked on, and it's just nothing. And so to find the stuff, it's hard, but it's fulfilling uh, at times. I maybe have, I'd say, six fans, six real fans. You have thousands upon thousands. Uh, What's the most fulfilling thing about stand-up? I like to hear this. Well, I guess it. it Stand up is such a. Uh, it's a forest, you know. There's no path, you know. Everybody's going to experience things grow differently. There's different animals, different predators, different prey, different things you can eat, different things that'll kill you, different sure. things that will kill something else, someone yeah. else, audiences. You know, it's a different. It's completely different for everyone. Yeah. You could follow in the footsteps of those you admire, but you're still going to. You're gonna take a different amount of steps, you know, and it's gonna very true. Um, so I guess it, I I say that because it matters a lot what you want out of it. It really does. Yeah. And I have met people over the years who got into it because they wanted to be rich. I have met those those comics. I can tell you honestly, uh, off the top of my head, none of them are still doing stand up really. Wow! If you get into this for the money, because it, it's it's like any artistic world. Like uh, there is the mega wealthy, and there is the super broke, and in and if you're lucky, you end up in the middle class. You know, because there is there is like a middle class, upper middle class of stand up. Like, middle class comedy is where I think I've found the most. Like you, the most engaging, the most insightful, mm -hmm. the most relatable, and well, I mean, you're talking about the audience member. I'm talking about like what, what, the amount of money you can make. Oh, money! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, because yeah. means that you pay your bills with comedy. Oh, I, I, I had I'm, a I'm very, you know, <clears throat> like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it right here, you know. <laughs> but I'm very. Uh, that's great. It's great. But I'm saying, like, I think if you, getting into it for the money is. I don't know if that's the right call. Yeah. Um, I think some people want actual fame. Fame's a big they, one. They want to just be worshipped. And, like, I know a lot of people got into comedy for that reason as well. And a couple of them are still around, but they don't have what they want. The version of fame they're talking about doesn't really exist uh, anymore. Um, wow. Damn. So those ill, those kind of, not ego reasons or whatever, but, like, yeah. not, not humble, good, intended reasons usually just kind of just fizzle out people like it's an art form and there is no map for it it's not yeah. like a real job it's not like a real or it's not like a um it's not like a career where you can go and get a college education and the steps are already laid out for you it's right. not i mean these days not so much i know degrees mean very little but i'm saying like if you want to be a fucking lawyer it's a very the map is there yeah, you know, uh, yeah. That, though, like, if if stand art is like a forest, uh, and then the rest of the world's like a park. There's already paths groomed. Most people would rather actually be in the park, you know. And I love parks, and there's parts of the park <laughs> that are apply to stand up as well. You know what I mean? Like, or art as well. Like, it's a park, but can you, you know, can you be in that park after night, after nightfall? <laughs> right. Uh, is the park? True. Should you go near the water in the park? You know. <laughs> but anyway, point being. It, the most fulfilling thing to me is that all I ever wanted to do from a very young age was create. I just didn't know what field that was going to be. I didn't know, you know, when I was super young, I, wanted, I thought it was in acting or like perform, like theater, but that just wasn't what it ultimately was. Uh, it wasn't like the path I wanted to take because there, that path was not available growing up in Louisiana really um, and you know I never thought about I can't I have no musical ability <laughs> you know I can't I'm tone deaf I tried learning to play guitar 
And I remember my guitar instructor being like, okay, now we're in E. Bing, 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 bing. Now we're in fucking F major, whatever. <laughs> bing, 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 bing. And I'm like, it sounds the same to me. It sounds the exact <laughs> same to me. That's nuts. You know? Nuts. But like, I, but from a young age, I just knew I wanted to like take ideas and make something out of them. So the more you walk through that forest, yeah. you just like... You start to figure out the forest. Yeah. You start to go like, oh, I can now, I know what direction I'm going now. I know over there, it's a fucking cliffs and it's a little dangerous. And over there, there's a river. And up ahead, there's a clearing. And yeah. there's some trees. And my favorite type. So like, uh, it, it came to me when I was young that like the only, the thing I was able to just do whenever I was nervous, whenever I was scared, or whenever I was happy, I was make people laugh. So it was like, and then I started to realize like, hey, you can actually do that with ideas. They don't have to be, jokes don't have to just be meaningless set up punch. They can also be idea driven pieces. Yeah. And then I, and so that's the most fulfilling thing to me is that like, I am now and forever on my journey. I, that's that's excellent. I can you know? you know what I can see that because you do have you have substance to your material, Thank you. and that's I mean that I, I've you throw in you throw in a, a dumb wordplay or a silly joke sure. that of, but that's Why just not? part of, yeah of course yeah. But that's part of comedy. I like I like that. I can see how just the create I want to create and if that funneled into comedy then. Boy, I'm glad it did. Because if we didn't, yeah. if we didn't have you, it'd be a sadder, just a sadder state of, of well, stand up. I think definitely less Tony Satchery's out there. <laughs> you sons of bitches. Yeah. <laughs> I like that's that's a really insightful answer, man. I got I got Fuck a few. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Got a few. Yeah. What's your one of your worst bombs? My worst bomb thus far. Again, <laughs> but um. Is uh, it was not that long ago. It was like three, 2019. I got no shit. I got this offer to do a private party, oh. which in, in New York. Now going forward, uh, if if any if if you if you want to hire, a, I don't. If you're gonna hire a fucking comedian for a fucking private event, I'm gonna got three pieces of advice for you. One, research the fucking comedian. <laughs> yeah, why would you not okay. take that? Two. Go to a comedy club instead. Just take the private party to the nearest comedy club. And three, do what I said. Number two. <laughs> okay, it's very true because that, that that you can yeah. you can you have a great experience because the the club I've been gracious enough to work a couple yeah. clubs as a feature and it was wonderful. Uh, there's nothing like a club. There's nothing oh, okay. like there's it. It's so unique. Of an experience. Well, the problem too. So, like, you know, I'm not a crowd work guy. I'm not a fucking. What, how, where are you from? Right. What's your name? I don't. I don't I, look, some people are great at that. Awesome. You know, it's entertaining. Sure, it's just not what I do. Yeah. And like, so I got hired to do this private event, which was a. It was a double. Of, it was a double header. It was this 55 year old retiree. So this guy. Oh. God, I, a, I, wanna, I can't remember what kind of company it was, but it was like a, he was a very blue collar, worked his way up, millionaire. Re he had been retired for five years. He retired at 50 uh, when he sold off the business to a bigger conglomerate. So he had retired five years earlier and gone back to school because he had never, he never finished college. Oh, okay. So he went back to school and it was his simultaneous 55th birthday and graduation party. Jesus right. Christ. So I show up and it's half family, half people he went to Long Island University with. This was in New York, right? <laughs> oh, so God. it's a fucking just jam up of people. There's no stage. The son who hired me, uh, who claimed he was a, <laughs> he, he claimed his dad was a big fan of mine. He claimed this. When I showed up, he was like, yeah, man. We're gonna get the mic set up. So basically, <laughs> there was a bar, a right? There was a bar where there was you walk in, and there was a bar, and then there was like a little area with tables, and then there was another bar, right? So they they set the fucking microphone in the middle of the table area, 
Oh, so there's no stage. Oh, so I'm basically doing comedy, not even in the round, because it's just <laughs> barring people this way and barring people this way. <laughs> and a couple people sitting at the table here and a couple people sitting at the table behind me. So, and I'm like, and I can tell oh. in his, son eye, his son's eyes, he realized he fucked up. Oh. He realized he has put me in a terrible situation. However, can't back out now. And um, <laughs> How long was it? What? How long was it? Well, originally, it was like do an hour. Okay. When I took the gig. When I got there, he was, after the mic got set up and everything, and it was like realizing, like, oh. And also, everyone's been at this party now for two hours. Oh, so God. they're drunk, they're fucking God. having the time, of their, they're just hammered. So, <laughs> ugh, I, oh, still get, I still rough. get, like, rough. moments of shell shock just thinking of it. But, so the guy's like, you only have to do, like, half an hour, man. And I was like... Okay, sure. At this point, it's like, <laughs> fuck it. Let's just, let's just dive into let's this. Let's get this over with. Let's just do it. We already know this is going to be god-awful. <laughs> let's just take this beating. And he's like, my uncle's going to introduce you. He's kind of famous. His uncle was a fucking newscaster in Boston. Not famous at all because we were in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Famous to his family, maybe, but but the guy was like, "Hey, I've got you know, I've got some public speaking experience, so I'll just introduce you." So he goes up, just a douchebag anchor, you know, brings me on, and immediately it's like this half is all family, this half is all students, fellow students. They're talking. As soon as I try and engage with them, this side starts talking. Oh, as soon as I switch back and try and engage with them, this side starts talking. All oh. the while, the dad is sitting right fucking here, <laughs> right. And now I'm being full on heckled by this group of gay students, <laughs> right? This group of gay dudes who are like students and they're just being sassy gay dudes. So I challenge them. I dare one of them to come up and kiss me. <laughs> and the father goes, wow. the father, the guy's like, let's move on from this. <laughs> and now I'm just, and, and, and people keep being like, just tell a joke. And I'm like, so I'd start telling a joke, but then this side starts talking again. So I try and like refocus on them. And then this side, it was just this, Constant oh. balancing act where it's like, I can't tell you a joke because I'm a long-winded fucking storyteller and you, son, claimed you knew this. <laughs> That's right? the worst. So I'm just yammering. I'm probably, honestly, eight, I think maybe, uh, maybe 12 minutes in. And the guy... News anchor just gets up and takes the microphone away from me. Oh no! He goes, well, that's enough of that, folks. <laughs> the son told him to. It's like you're the sports anchor. So I was like, like, whoa! And I just sort of like backed away, went into the bathroom, right? And they started. Oh he started doing like a trivia thing. The the uncle. So he had everyone was now focused on that. So I'm just in the bathroom, just like, all right, all right, just like, okay, just walk out. Go, I had to coat check. I was like, go to the coat check, get your jacket, get the fuck out of here because it was in February. <laughs> oh, God. And I leave the bathroom and the fucking father's right there. And I just look him in the eyes and I say, sir, I am so fucking sorry for ruining your birthday graduation <laughs> party. And he goes, you didn't ruin anything. In fact, I'm glad this happened. My son is an idiot. <laughs> And he makes terrible decisions, and he needed to learn a lesson tonight. Wow, look at you. <laughs> but I'm in my head like, thank you for acknowledging that I was a terrible decision. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he goes to hand me the check, and I say, no, thank you. I was like, man, I I can't accept that. And he goes, just fucking take it. He's like, he's like exhausted by my yeah, presence. Just, just, just fucking take go, it. Get out like, of here. All right, I did. Yeah. <laughs> and I fucking left, and I walked the streets of New York in <laughs> February fucking just shitty wet snowy cold <laughs> with the worst earned money like, that you've had. I can't like I'm that I was the, I, I'm garbage that was terrible <laughs> I couldn't make that work <laughs> fuck I'm garbage and I get to the cellar <laughs> I get to the cellar I, wa I walk from the show was on this show was at this bar on like 24th maybe I walk down to the cellar to the West Village you know a nice 40 minute walk and I get there, and I'm early. My set's not for another probably an hour, but I walk in. Because I'm just like, I just want to sit down and turn my head <laughs> off. And the host of the show, he goes, the fuck happened to you? You look like you just got molested. <laughs> I was like, I don't know, man. I, uh, and I just got, I told him the whole story. And he just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, 
sorry to hear, but yeah. then when he brings me on, he's like, all right, your next comic apparently just bombed just, worse than <laughs> anyone I've ever known in oh, this business. Been in this just business to... for a long time. <laughs> he just bombed so bad, uh, he might bomb again tonight. So be prepared, folks, for what could possibly be the shittiest set you've ever seen. Sean Patton. And I actually had a pretty good set. But... Uh, yeah, that fucked with my head. Oh, like that, that dude, afterwards, yeah. I was drunk and I was like, "I can't accept this money." <laughs> and then, you know, fucking other comedians were like, "You realize you're an asshole right now if you don't if you don't take that money." I'm like, "No, you're no, you're, yeah, I'm yeah, going to." But yeah, but dude, it was like nothing. Soul worked. crushing. It felt it felt like if you've ever been swimming, if you're an Oli- like if you're an Olympic swimmer and suddenly you forget how to dog paddle. <laughs> You forget how to tread water. Yeah, yeah. You're just like, yeah. It's, it's like it's like something you've been doing your whole fucking adulthood <laughs> that you're pretty good at. That suddenly, for a moment, nothing works, and they're not responding to anything. And they're not even listening, and it was just oh. God fucking off. And it fucked with me for I'm gonna say a good like a few weeks. I would just like really. I, I would seriously just be like writing and then stop and think about it and be like. Ah. If I said this, it wouldn't work as <clears throat> dog shit. And I'm, I don't well, know. Because it was just like, it was, it, it, I, I mean, I guess everybody's got to go through that every time, every now and again. But like, yeah, it was just so bad. And, and <laughs> oh, rough. and this is my That's favorite rough. part. That's <laughs> rough. So the, one of the bartenders, like, so this was only like a year ago. It's like two years, so two years later. But this was a year ago that this happened. But it was like, so it was two years after the show. He, he he at a show in New York at a club at the cellar actually he comes mm-hmm. over to me afterwards he's like hey just want to tell you man um, I was at that I was working oh and he started saying it and he saw the I guess he saw the like oh yeah. terror in my eyes of like something I had you buried. saw that horror show cool. and he was like I know man I didn't know if I wanted to bring it up to you now but I just want to tell you like they fucking sucked <laughs> they were a bunch of fucking assholes from the beginning yes they were they didn't tip well. Everyone was hammered, uh, and they they fucked you over, man. How He's much like, did that wash wash that away? Did it wash the bomb away? It did, but then he also then he was like, "I'm I'm a huge comedy fan. I saw you." You know, he's like, I saw you like 10 years ago at UCB. Like, yeah. he, I was like, oh, really? Wow. And he's just talking about comedy. But then he was like, that was, and like, we had a drink together. That was bad. No, he, but then he was like, that was the worst bomb I've ever seen. Oh. He's like, I've seen so much comedy, dude. He's like, he's like yeah. I've seen everyone bomb. He's like, I tell people about the worst bomb. The I've worst ever seen. bomb. Oh, I'm like, man. You say my name. He's like, well, yeah, but, but I also tell him, like, I enjoy, you know, I enjoy your comedy. But like, I'm like, I, you know what? Fine. You I'll just, be the worst bomb. Can't you just tell him it was Norman? Him. Like, can't you just yeah, say, yeah, just, just say it was sense. anyone else? Yeah. Anyone else? Oh, God. that's a rough. That's a that's that's a rough one. It's I stung, dude. I haven't had two. I haven't had two big of bombs, but there was. I do remember one time, I I workshop this joke about how I'm too short to be in the KKK. Right. And <laughs> I I said the joke, and I've never heard a room so quiet. Uh, I heard someone's uh, a girl's thumbs hitting wow. her phone. I was like, "Wow!" Angrily typing. Yeah, out. just like this. this literally is the cisgendered man, <laughs> white, short, dumb dago comic. Well, something. I mean, yeah. I know you said you're only a year in. The best advice I could tell anyone at any stage of this is there is no one bomb that will break you. Yeah, and there is no one kill that will make you. Oh, like, you gotta. You've got to do both. A lot yeah. to get the outcome that you think. Like yeah. you have to bomb repeatedly to suck, and you have to kill repeatedly to succeed. Yeah, you have to do both a lot, and you're gonna do. It's like a, it's yeah. like an eighty twenty split in a perfect version, or it's like an eighty twenty split in the best case scenario. You're I can still see that. gonna bomb. Yeah, time time. I recently took up golf <clears throat> and I've no. I've hit some perfect shots. Yeah, and then like I played my first round, uh, I find I got my first birdie, yeah. and then I shot a ten on one hole. So like, yeah. I I can see it. Any comedian who doesn't bomb occasionally is not trying. If you ask me, is not actually doing. Yeah, it's not a lot of at bats. You know, you gotta have. Yeah, well, I mean, there's okay. a lot of people who will get up there and do the same thing. For years, for a decade, they'll get yeah. there and do the same set. Yeah, and it's like, well, what's the, what's the point of doing this if that's all you want to bring to the comedy? Yeah, if you had a restaurant, you wouldn't serve one dish. And I'm saying, you know? as not only a comedy fan but a comedy lover, 
I would far rather watch my favorite comedian get on stage and take some risks and maybe they don't pay off fully than watch them repeatedly do the same thing over and over again. That leads me to my last question. Yeah. Uh, I have, or at least with fervor, trying to coin this term bite worthy. As a comedian who is worthy or good enough, you yourself, who is someone that you feel is like bite worthy? Like, a, like all. Oh, fuck that joke is good or this style is like god is killer I mean Kyle Kinane is one of my absolute favorite. yeah I mean he's also a friend so I'm but yeah like, but I'm not biased like I'm, right. o- I'm only a friend with, of Kyle's because of how good he is at comedy yeah his joke if I met Kyle the non Kyle <laughs> not a comedian would be a very disgruntled angry <laughs> yeah curmudgeon angry fucking curmudgeon. Uh, tugboat captain <laughs> You know, we never, you never know him. Yeah, he'd, yeah. He'd, he'd live on his rig. Yeah, very <laughs> true. I can see that. I can see that. He'd just be up and down the Mississippi, just, uh, he's goddamn barges. <laughs> he's goddamn foreign barges. In, uh, in God his Midwestern uh, Let me guess. Yeah, let me guess. I got to drop this one off in fucking St. Louis, huh? <laughs> Great. Arches, huh? <laughs> the only arches <laughs> I care about are the golden arches. Yeah, but, but, but like... Whatever fucking, <laughs> but Kyle is a Kyle. I love Kyle, but like, yeah, that dude for over a decade now has regularly made me go, fuck, yeah, man, that's good, that's good, that's fuck, that's great. that's one of one of there's yeah. three there are three jokes that I've heard in the past like year that really got me. One of his one of them is his. It's about people who play the lottery should be more scared of lightning. <laughs> God. That's like, and that's one of those ones where have you ever seen an invention? Yeah. You're like, I could have invented that, yeah, because you know it's like, oh, but I that's no. that is one. Mark Norman's uh, grape juice joke, and then what's Mark's grape juice joke? <laughs> I, you don't know how close it became to being a pedophile. Like example, I was in third grade. I like third grade girls. I'm an adult now. I date adult women. Right. When I was in third grade, I drank grape juice. Now I'm an adult. I drink wine. But I still like grape juice. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a killer joke. It's so funny. It's funny simple. Stuff. Boom, boom, boom. And it's like, oh, it's a weird thought. No. And then Shane Gillis says racism is not something you have or don't have. It's you know, racism is like being racist is a lot like being hungry. Like, yeah, you're not right now, but a cheeseburger can cut you off in traffic. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> that's that's, that's a killer. That's a killer joke. So, yeah, yeah that's, that's funny. That's a fun. <laughs> so, wrap this up. Do you have any questions for me, Sean Patton? Um, or a question? Huh. This is fun. Oh, flip it, up, flip it back on yourself. Yeah, I started doing that because you know I don't want to. You know, I just never know. What do people would, want to know about me? What would you say is? Um, huh. Okay, that's good. What is your favorite part? of being a stand-up at a year in? At a year in, it's... A year in. I would say it's... It's the attempt. It's the... Uh, every every attempt that I get to go to, I'm like, here's another chance to fucking do it. You know? Yeah. Whether it's the same joke that I've, you know, told for the past couple sets, this new joke that I think is super funny. It's it's the the opportunity to do something <clears throat> that I haven't done yet, or do something new with something that I've created already. And that's that's it's the attempt, I would okay. say. So it's it's fun to do. And then I'm when I when I I had one time I, I was featuring and the feature uh, people go up. You were better than that guy who was the headline. It's like oh you don't. Don't yeah. say that too loud. <laughs> Don't do I, that. I appreciate that. That's very nice. But you just right place, right time. You know, sometimes you're hot. You know, sometimes you're not. I did a uh, a show in Fort Walton Beach, and I think it was probably my the first time I ever like lit up a room. It was great, and it was an odd crowd. They started chanting "Let's go, Brandon." Kind of shows you how that show oh, okay. went. Yeah, but it was it was still a good crowd. They were ready. They're rowdy, drunk, but it was. Fire and that was uh, fans of Brandon Marshall, the ex NFL <laughs> wide receiver. Of course, you know? I mean, because yeah. it's a football town, uh, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that 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 wraps it up. I'd say the oh, attempt, and yeah, I, I appreciate That's this. A good thing, yeah. <clears throat> if you'd have been like, all my all, 
my, my dick's wet all the time. <laughs> No, from everybody no, shucking no. on ass. No, no. They'd be like, okay. Yeah, okay, let's... <coughs> let's not, can we cut that? <laughs> yeah, no, oh, yeah, that's, it's, it's the attempt. So, uh, uh, that's it. You have... What do you... Plug anything you need to plug. I mean, the biggest thing right now, the special. It's, uh, December, December 2nd, 2nd. Peacock. It's called Number One. Number One. The special. Oh, man. Okay. You are you are number one in our hearts. Thank you so much, Sean. Try, you are the man. Swing, swing. I just said. We just said swing.